Welcome to the Waffle House. I mean, Seth is unscripted. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to waffle on completely like it's nobody's business. Brevin, casual bias rugby, how's it? We've got a fun topic tonight. Before I give you the topic, hit that subscribe button because you know you want to. This is rugby at its best from three absolute rugby gurus. Like, there's nobody <laughs> in the world that has more knowledge than the three of us when it comes to rugby. If anybody tells you anything different, they're lying. they're lying. I mean, it's crazy that we're all already more than halfway to to a thousand subscribers. So we appreciate each and every one of you guys. And my favorite comment of all time is this guy that's been spamming our comment section, calling Brett the talking carrot. So I just wanted to give him a special <laughs> shout out because <laughs> that had me cracking up. He's always on Brett's case. Everyone's always on Brett's case, and that wasn't even the point of it. The, we always thought, listen, Brett's going to be like the, the mediator and I'm the shit stirrer. But yeah, everyone's just on Brett's case. Absolutely crazy. But we appreciate you guys coming out every yeah, single time. It's, it's the same. It's the same in life. It's people, people can't handle that this ginger has more knowledge than him, attracts more beautiful women that's more wealthy wow. than everybody else. Um, it, it just happens. Just, just get with the times, deal with it. I'm completely joking about everything. We do appreciate all of you. I just like shit stirring a little bit. Tonight's topic, Reven, what do you think of Coach Rasi Erasmus telling the world that he doesn't think Sia Kulisi is going to be captain because he wants his captain to be based in South Africa? Yeah, um, I'm sure this <clears throat> this news, um, especially when it, especially when it gets announced, because I'm sure it is going to get announced at some point that Sia Khaleesi will not be the Springbok captain going into the season, purely because Rossi does like a captain that's based in South Africa and it's got nothing to, to do with anything else. Um, I just think that there is going to be a, a bit of an uproar. I think people are going to be upset with it. But at the same time, it's not like we're losing Sia Khaleesi. We just, it's yet another, we're going to build up another leader. Now, to get into the debate of who it's going to be, that is a tough one because I actually still haven't made up my mind of who should be the captain going forward. It's because I, I think we need to pick a captain that's going to take us forward to 2027. So, yeah, I think it, when, when the news breaks eventually, there's going to be a bit of an uproar. But like I, we saw the first episode of Chasing the Sun or of Chasing the Sun 2, Rassi knows what he's doing, man. He knows what he is doing. He knows who to talk to, how to talk to them. And yeah, trust me, he knows what he's doing. So I'm keen to see how this plays out. I've got a I've got a pretty different perspective on how I would approach it. I think if Sia plays, he has to be captain. It's the same as I don't do you guys remember we we spoke about it? Um John Smith and and Victor Madfield when Brett mentioned like Victor Madfield could be part of the leadership group, but John Smith was always the captain. He's got he knows how to motivate the team, how to get the best out of the team. And my opinion should be, or well, my opinion is we should get like a youngster, identify a youngster, make him, make him part of the leadership group. Let's say, for instance, Damien Willemse. I'm just using him because he's the best player in the world. And he literally learns from Sia Kulisi until the day that Sia says, okay, we are done. And then Damien Willemse takes over from him. So, you know, he knows exactly what is expected of him. Like, for someone, because I don't think our team is going to change too much. So to have a different captain, a guy that was just a normal player to be a captain all of a sudden, I don't think that mixes well. I think get someone into that leadership group, have him come through. Because Willems is still young. By the time CR goes, we will have a bit of a different team and people will know Willems as the captain of the team. You can give me your input on that. That's just my perspective. I, I agree and I also don't agree because back in the day, John Smith was the captain, um, not only under the players' um, vision, but also under the coaches' vision. They, uh, Lots of players have told me that played with John Smith that even the coaches kept quiet when John Smith would talk. And, and uh, they almost saw him as like the authority, the authoritarian of the team. And... In now recent days, Rasi Erasmus does not play to that script. Rasi likes a, a five-man or a six-man leadership group. He likes the fact that if one captain has to get injured right now, he can make the same a, 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 a call on a captain that same minute that it happens. Like yeah. when John Smith 
would go off the field back in the day, it would be refs would ask who's captain because Victor wouldn't be on the field as well. And they'd be like, oh, shit, who is captain? And they wouldn't know. So that was quite a, a thing for me. But I, I, I don't think that if Sia Kulisi is not captain now, it's not going to be a big issue mm. if somebody else is captain while Sia is on the field. Because as you saw in Chasing the Sun, when, Eber, when Sia Kulisi can't make a decision, he asks his leadership group. And yeah. so it doesn't really matter who ca- who is captain. Well, what, is on- what do you what do you guys think of the perspective that was that was like going around where Sia Kulisi isn't necessarily the best six in South Africa? Like a massive part of his position in the squad was that he's captain and that he's a great captain for us. Like in terms of leadership, and he gets the best out of us. If he's not captain, isn't there a better six that we would rather want to see in that jersey? If you take the captaincy roll away from him. I think if if like like Brett was saying, right, um Sia Kulisi on paper was captain and don't get me wrong, he was a leader within that team. But for instance, Andre Pollard ran that back line. Sia Kulisi had nothing to do with that back line. That was Andre Pollard's baby and that's what he dealt with. Same with Faf de Klerk as well. That that's what they dealt with. Then you had Vili LaRue protecting the back three. Then you have a Dwayne Familian and eighth man controlling the lineouts and even as well. Bongi controlling the front rows, Kitsov, like this is your group and they each know, okay, I'm the leader of this role and that's how that's how they work together. But now the thing with Sia Kulisi is, and I've always believed this, is he's a, he's a player that's very easy to get behind and to play for. So he, you know he's such a nice guy, you know he has the best interest for every single player in that team, whether you are a starter or a water boy, he has your best interest. And that's why people play for Sia Kulisi, because that's how he brings people together. But at the same time, I get what you're saying, Casual. Like, you know, if Sia is not going to be captain, is maybe, a, I know Dion Free is aging, but maybe is he a better option for that island thing oh, or the island test? Started. Oh, Marku van Staden, I was going to say him next. I just didn't want to be that Bulls fan, you know. Um, so, yeah, uh, look, but at the end of the day, I think Sia Kulisi is a player you play for. So to have him on the field, you know he's going to give 100% and people will give 100% for him. So that's where the situation comes a bit tricky. It also comes down to the last, say, however many years that that back three has played together. Team chemistry is a massive part of a successful team. So whether Sia Kulisi is not captain and he's not the best flank, the best combination is those three together. But now with Dwayne being out, there could still be another another eight coming in. But I mean, the uh, Peter Steff, Sia Kulisi and whoever's at eight, the team chemistry is extremely important, not just for the back three of the, of the forward pack, but for the back three of the back line the the um the half backs of the back line it's it's all about chemistry it's about where you know this player will be at any given time and that's why whether sia kulisi will be the best flank or not that's irrelevant he's the best flank for the team so that's why i think it, it wouldn't make a difference yeah also yeah. i think something that we kind of missing like even if he isn't the captain he will still be part of the leadership group, right? So he'll still have a massive say in in what's going on. So I just think I'd keep him there. I'll keep him as captain and then have like almost a second captain, like co-captains, but it's more like mentoring the next captain coming through because I think the next guy has to be young. That's why I kind of eliminate the likes of uh, Bongyu Manambi because he's also aging. He doesn't start every game. Malcolm Marks is better. If you think about all the criteria that he put out there, the best solution to all of it is probably Damien Willemsen, but would you see him as a captain? I don't necessarily think so. Well, the thing the thing is, I think if we're looking at options, yeah, the, the obvious options that people are going to put forward is Lukanyo Am is one, Yevon Etzebeth is one, Bongi Amunambi is one, because they've all done it before. Um, then you look at, uh, if you look at a storm, oh, balloons, why the hell do I have balloons? Anyway, um, then if you look at a bull, a bull side, uh, obviously Vili LaRue is not on the younger side, but that is another kind of thing you could look at. But I'm just naming names here that, you know, that could be a shout. 
But I think especially a lot of people will say Ibn Etzebeth, right? And that's the obvious what people say will say. Now, I think the thing I have against that is we've seen in, in the past, Ibn Etzebeth, um, for me, is just not a captain. Uh, he's a good leader and he leads in ways that, that, that are great. But I feel like we don't get the best out of Ibn Etzbet when he has to focus on being the captain on the day. Um, yeah, just and that's on the game. Why, yeah. Um, so, but the thing is, I saw a little snippet there in Chasing the Sun, and, and I don't know if anyone else noticed this, but I think it was in the Scotland game, and Willemse stood up and, and, he, and he was chatting to the Oaks, and he was saying, like, listen, let's do this, let's do this, let's try this, you know? Um, and that immediately tells me, you know, He's already more vocal in the team than he was in 2019 when he first came onto the scene, 2018 as well. He's more, you know, he's more, he's, he's definitely going to be the 15 going forward, I believe. So I think Willems is not a bad shot. If they can really, like, breed him into a proper leader, I don't think it's the, the worst shot that there is. Um, I don't know what anyone else thinks about that. I I don't know I don't know if I could agree at all actually like he's the furthest away from the action he's the furthest away from my thought process as a as a leader in a Springbok setup I mean he hasn't captained Western Province he hasn't captained the Stormers he hasn't captained anywhere that he's played um, now to give a guy the leader the most prestigious leadership role in the country and yes when i say most prestigious i even see the president as more prestigious ah, the the captain as more prestigious as the president in south africa so for me that's not even an option like i i'm trying to picture why this is no not a ta dig at any of you two this is just i'm trying to picture why you guys would even think that he would be captain and like i said it's not a dig i'm just trying to um, yeah. comprehend but i do however think that if a captain come, comes in now it's not going to be somebody we expect i think it's going to maybe for the island test it could be lacanio am both test boom he's the man to lead the team because he's done it at the sharks he's been vice captain of the spring box but I think it's going to be like, for example, not saying this is going to happen, but uh, somebody like a Nietling Fushia, young enough to play 50 tests for the box, um, strong enough to be a contender as a good tight head prop, um, great leadership potential, stuff like that. But, yo, interesting. I, I is, was also. No, I just wanted to say that the thing is. Um, it's not necessarily that I even think Damien Willemse would be the greatest choice. I really don't. I would never even go for it. But I think what the coaches will do is they will throw out these options. Um, and they're going to throw out as many options that they can so that they have enough, so that they see, okay, we have enough leadership on the table to pick someone. Um, so if, if it were up to me, I do think having a forward as a captain i don't know just, or a flyer i like uh, like i just i picture a, a captain being a forward and that's not just a back to back line or a 10. that's just those are the people that that um that you know they 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 see the game in a different way i mean for instance like you say a fullback is away from the action a lot of the time even a wing so having a captain on wing is just not ideal in my opinion a center like look on your arm it can work but i don't think look on your arm is the best option so yeah i'm still like so confused as to where they go with this yeah so just with the criteria that they brought up in terms of it's got to be on the on the younger side he's got to uh, play in south africa he's got to have some experience all those type of things just like um, it went, Damien Willems is probably the closest in terms of just going with the criteria, but I don't see him as, as a captain either. I was just like pointing that out to use that as, as an opinion. Mine is out, actually an outside shot, and it's not someone that plays in South Africa, but he plays in the URC. And I feel that he's still close enough because they play so many games in South Africa. The South Africans play so many games overseas. Like Rice, can still have a, a decent amount of communication with the guy. And I'm thinking the likes of a of a Steven Kutsov. I know he's not on on the youngest side, but he's got all the experience in the world. He knows how, uh, he knows the box team 
in, inside out. He played in South Africa all his life. He's just going over to Ulster now. He's still close enough to South Africa. So I'm going either with Stephen Kurtz or, or Lukanyo Am, but I agree that it should be a forward that is there with the game. Obviously, I can't have a shout like Brett just did with, with Nietling Fushia because we don't even know if Nietling Fushia is going to be there. Um, yeah. so that's just the main thing. Like It's so tough to think who the captain would be. My last one is I would not do even it's a bit. I agree fully. Focus on, on his game. Smash people. That should be what's going through Ivan's mind. Smash people and then here and there throw like an input. Okay, I think we should do this. But other than that, it's just literally pull those people. Wipe my asshole with them. That is that that should be on Ivan's mind. Yeah, at, at at this point, at this point, I don't even think a Steven Kitsov makes the Springbok side. Um very, very controversial in the sense that he's one of my favorite players and we kind of look the same but i do however think that he's he's falling under the radar of me he had a great game this weekend that passed um but that's like the first great game that he's had in a very long time he's had a few good games his world cup was dismal but he had this was his first great game so i don't know I don't know. I'm I'm very confused as to who I think could be the potential new Springbok captain. The thing is also like, is Lukan Lukanya Arms spot that secure at the moment with with Jesse Creel and Kanan Moody and Inku van Vijk, all those guys knocking on the door? Like obviously, uh, Lukanya Arms had a very good game for the Sharks now, but he's seasoned this far. We've we've spoke spoken about should he even make the squad at the moment with all the talent yeah. that we have at outside center. Do you even see him as being a captain then? We know he can be a captain. He can be a good captain. But he's not close enough to the action. He has done it before. His form isn't necessarily the best at the moment. But we know like form means nothing because <laughs> Andre Paul hardly plays franchise rugby and then he comes to the box and always just turns it up. That That's just how it works. When the people start playing for the box, they play the best rugby. So I don't know. It's, it's such a difficult conversation to have when you're not in the mind of Rossi because all of us just thought... Well, if Sia's gone, we'll just get another person in. But the fact that Sia stays there makes it so weird almost. Okay, yeah. so give me let, let me let me try this then. Let me try this because we're not getting anywhere actually. Let me ask this. Brevin, give me your top three candidates who you think is going to be captain. Just your top three. Who I think or who I want? Both. Whatever. Okay. If you, who okay. you think or who you Mixture. want is relevant. Okay. Give me three uh, okay. now. Well, who I think... I think they will go with Ibn Etzebe. I do believe they will. Um, who I want, I'll give two names. Uh, I'm going to go with... Oh my goodness gracious me. Um, it's so tough. Uh, who I, I want... Um, <laughs> I, th I, I want... I genuinely think it's... It is being a bit hypocritical from past, but I genuinely think Sia Kulishi should stay captain because I don't want to mess with... I, I just, I'm just i looking at the Ireland test and I think Sia should be captain for the Irish tests because I don't want to, I don't want to mess with something that, that works. Um, I think the guys still respect Sia. They know he's gone to France to, to, to obviously earn a bit of money there, uh, like a bit more than what he would here. Um, and also to enjoy his rugby as well. Um, so I, I, I think I'd, I'd happily keep Sia at captain. And I, I think, I don't I, I can only name those two. I, I don't know if anyone else is, like you said, we have to breed someone up. So if I have to breed someone, um, I think... You, like, what about a Marco from Stoddard? No, no. He's just, uh, he's ESCOM. He goes to the, the power boxes to switch your lights on and off. That's what he does. That's what he does. His name is ESCOM for a reason. Um, I don't think he, he's a captain. He's never captained the Bulls. Um, not for me. I think if we look at, I don't know if he even gets into the box, but a guy that I've been impressed with at the Bulls, yes, call me a Bulls fanboy, whatever. Ron Nokia has done a fantastic job this season for me. Maybe like a Nietzsche pusher shout, maybe that's an option. So, yeah, I, I, I really, I'm still, I need to really think deeper about this. So, casual, yeah. you go next. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't see that they're doing, that they do it with Yevon again. 
I think they, they've tested that. It hasn't worked out perfectly. So I'm going Bongi Manambi, Lukanyo Am, or um, Damien Willemse. Those are the three that I think they might go for. Damien Willems uh, much further away than the other two, but I've got a strong feeling about Bongi Manambi. And if I had to pick someone that I really wanted to, oh, I don't even know. I'm going Stephen Kutsov or Malherbe. I don't even care. Can I, can, I, can I ask you why you say Bongi and, and um, Lukanya Am, despite the Sharks having a dismal season, Bongi Manambi being caught on camera, absolutely... Um, disrespecting the refs like he owns the place and the systems at the Sharks not working even with those two known captains on the field. Yeah, I just think Bongi's done it before. He has led the, the Springboks before, whether that was from the start or if uh, Sia Kulisi went off the field. He's, he's already part of the leadership group. I think he's very respected in the team. I think he gets... He understands Rossi and them well. I think there's a good relationship between the, the likes of those. I don't really think the the stuff that has happened with uh, Tom Curry or yeah, I think was it Tom Curry, and and the same with the with the ref. I don't think that plays too much of a role whether Rossi chooses him or not. He knows how to be a captain, and the, and the same goes for for Lucanio Am. Um, I just think that in terms of they've got the experience to already do it. They've got enough caps behind their name. Um, the only thing that I'm going against is the fact that they're a bit on the older side. Like, I can't think that he want to take it away from Sia just to give it to someone else that plays in South Africa yeah. after they've been under his leadership all this time. I would think if you're going for a new captain, start start someone that is young. And that's why I had to throw in Damien Willemse. But I can't see that you make a fullback the captain. I can see him being part of the leadership group like Vili Leroux was, but that is kind of it for, for that. The, the thing with Bongi, um, and this is just from what I see when I watch Bongi play, don't get me wrong, he has the ability to be a leader, um, as we've seen, for some, where you, you talk to the players all the time, he gets the players fired up, you know, people obviously like him, but I think something that he is not very good at is communicating with the referee. I feel like he doesn't know how to put across his when his team is getting frustrated and putting the questions towards Bongi. Bongi gets frustrated as well, and Bongi then <laughs> communicates to the ref in a in a in a way that could sound disrespectful, could be disrespectful, and immediately, naturally, if someone disrespects you as a person, you immediately go, "I don't like," or not that I don't like this person, but. <laughs> human psychology your mind will immediately start blowing some penalties that should probably go your way but so that's the thing with bongi for me it's just that he easily gets just his communication skills with the referee are not there for me just yet so that is why i don't have him as an option um i know he can be a leader but not an option for me but Mr. Burns, who 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 do you think should be going? Before forward? I give my answer, I want to agree with you on that one because obviously you know I'm 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 a captain myself, and I've learned over the years that regardless of how frustrated I am, if you, yes sir, thank you sir, I will speak to the guys. Sorry about that, sir. Yes sir, Mr. Ref, Mrs. Ref, whatever. When you start showing the ref like genuine respect and talk to them like a proper human being, things go your way. Like whether whether you want to admit it or not, things go. You saw at the tens one very crucial game that we played um, when the one captain was shouting at the ref and I was being very nice to the ref. Things went our way that shouldn't have gone our way. So I think that's exactly what you just said about Bongi and it's very crucial that the way he spoke spoke to Amy Barrett or Amy Cody Barrett, whatever her name, um, middle name is, um, she absolutely saw him and she was disgusted and that just added to the Sharks' woe. So yes, Bongi for me is not even an option, not even almost, I don't think he should even, does, he doesn't even deserve to be captain in my opinion. But I think it should be somebody completely fresh. Somebody that's maybe played two or three tests for the Springboks that is young enough that could lead the Springboks until 2027. 
And I'm, going with, and I'm going with he hasn't had box test yet. Um, I'm going with a very very odd shout here, and I think that it uh, could potentially be somebody like a Nietling for Shia, or even because there's a difficulty at eighth man. I think it could be somebody like Evan Ruiz. Wow. If, uh, I, I, even earlier this year, speaking about his discipline issues, and then captain shouts a couple of months later. That is because, how, because look how well he's turned it around. Look at uh, his discipline for the last eight games for the Stormers. He's gone from everybody hating his guts because of how ill discipline is to one of the people with the least penalty counts. Um, the he doesn't try and rough up people anymore. He's disciplined. He honors the refs' calls. He he's playing well again because he's not being an absolute asshole. I love so, that uh, Nathan Fischer shout, Brett. That that is a class shout. I, I can see that happening actually. Yeah. So the thing with Ivan Ruiz, and I agree, he's definitely fixed up his discipline a lot. And like I'll keep mentioning it, the only Stormers player that really impressed me against the Bulls was Ivan Ruiz because he never gave up. He kept going. He led by example. The only thing is, I see Ivan Ruiz like an Ibn Etzebeth in the sense that I want him to be my bruiser. I want him to run into Oaks. I want him to tackle Oaks. I don't want him to focus on any decisions. But if he can handle that responsibility, then I don't see why not. I don't, because I obviously I'd like to see him captain the Stormers a few times as well. I'd love for him to do that. Um, but yeah, I think Anietlin for sure is not a bad shout. Uh, Ron Nokia is not a bad shout. Um, but these are all things that that will only play out in July. We, we, don't, we don't know. So, or even Ju well, June, and we what don't age, really know. At what age did John Smith become captain of the Springboks? 23. 23 against yeah. Georgia. He had one game again as captain, and then he wasn't captain for like two or three years. And then again, when he was 25 or 26, somewhere around Yeah, I, I can see that Nedling Fushia storyline kind of playing out like that or the Graham Smith in, in terms of cricket. Spot him young, literally give him that responsibility from, from a young age, saying, listen, you're coming into this box squad to be the prop, and you're going to be the captain. That is your role and responsibility. It's massive, but we trust you are the man to to be able to to take us forward. And I kind of love that storyline because John Smith is probably the best captain that South Africa's had in rugby. Graham Smith, the best captain that we've had in cricket, and both have similar stories. So I would not be opposed to us trying to recreate that because it's worked twice beautifully. Yeah. I mean, I mean, touch wood that. For instance, the Stormers don't. For, I'll use both. Touch wood, the Stormers don't make the the URC final. Take Netland for sure. Put him in that Wales Test and let him captain the side. Genuinely, I, why not? It's a test that has little to no meaning. It's a test away from home, from for both sides. Give him a chance. You, you know, it's not about. But same with the Bulls. Touch wood, we don't make the final. Send Ron and the Stormers do send Ron Nokia. Give him a chance. Maybe, maybe that's a shout. Um, but yeah, um, it's a it's a tricky one, and I I think I'm interested to see how this plays out. My problem, my problem. I like so. Firstly, let me just say that I do like um, um, Ron Nokia a lot. Like I'm a, I'm a fan. But does he start for the box? Who does he start? Not right now. Yeah, yeah, but not like no I'm one. saying, I'm saying, I'm trying to put into perspective every single tight head prop in South Africa. Nietlin Vushia, the only person that he potentially doesn't keep out of the that that keeps him out of the team is Franz Malarba. But Franz Malarba coming off the bench in the second half for captain Nietlin Vushia, that makes more sense for me than a uh, Ruan Orkia starting over uh, Franco Mostert or a uh, Luit de Jager coming back or a... Uh, what would you think of Franco Mostert going to the six and then Juan Norkia going into the lock? No, I don't like Franco at flank. It doesn't work for me. Uh, it's mm. the same as Scott Barrett in New Zealand. Just play the oak at lock. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. No, it's true. It's 
as a lock, you, you know, they call you a steam room for an engine. You know, you have to just keep going and do the dirty work. And that's what Franco Mosta does. Like, you know, mm. you, no one sees him as this hero, but as a lock, he is a bloody hero because he does things that no one else sees, the, the cleaning and the rucks. He carries a lock. He may not gain a thousand meters, but I'll tell you what, he carries like 15 times, 16 times in a game. He makes every single tackle that comes his way. So, yeah, Aron Nokia probably doesn't get over, or definitely doesn't get over Franco Mostert at the moment. But I see them as similar players. I see them, yes. they're both workhorses. I just think Franco Mostert is more, um, he's more tuned. At the, he's, he's, he's older, he's more experienced, he's better. And Aron Nokia will get there. But um, I'm happy with the Nieton for sheer shout. If I could see that, I definitely want to see it happen. So, yeah, boys, bring on July. I can't wait. <laughs> the real answer is make Achiva Daimani captain. There you go. <laughs> Give yeah. me Achiva Daimani and we'll win wars. I don't even care. Yeah, I just want the Oak to... I don't know. I think that uh, speaking of Achiva Daimani, sorry, it's completely off topic, but this weekend that passed, I think that this whole Achiva Daimani being in the news is getting to his head because he came on and the first time he touched the ball um, against Edinburgh, he dropped it. He stepped into his own player, um, didn't gain any meters. I think that he needs to clear his mind, forget about him not being in the Springbok setup, forget about what Rassi said about him not being rounded enough and just focus on his game and then he'll be as good as everybody wants him to be and he could be in the Springbok side. Do you think that might be a reason why it didn't start as well? Maybe Dobba has been seeing some of the, the antics that he's been up to? Possibly. Yeah. Uh, look, so I was uh, surprised when I saw he didn't start. I, I hate to be this guy because like, I understand... People have to express their personalities. I get it. Like, I understand. But Achieve it, Achieve it is a fantastic rugby player. Don't get me wrong. He's awesome. But he's too flashy, in my opinion, to be a Springbok player. He's too much about appearance at the moment for me, personally, to be a Springbok player. Now, I can. people are going to look at me and say, well, this guy's a goofball. I mean, you're judging someone off their appearance and they can't be a Springbok player. But it's just, imagine a Springbok player having, like, rainbow-colored hair running out for the Springboks. Like, it just doesn't work for me. I'm old school like that. I am young, but I'm still old school like that. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm sure he'll come to his... Uh, he can he can be whatever he wants to be, don't get me wrong. But just, I, I don't know. I feel like maybe he's focused too much on his appearance at the moment than he is on the game. Uh, but that that's probably not the case because he's been playing well with, with all this appearance stuff. But I think, like you said, Rassi Rasmus said something. And even Andreas is an example where you take criticism and you fix it. And I think mm. Hachiva Damani can do the same thing. And... Goodness gracious, he's good enough to be a Springbok. So fix your stuff and let's hope you yeah, see him there at some point. We've we've spoke about it before, right? When especially when we talk about like Owen Farrell or Finn Russell or whatever. Like we all want characters in the game, people to express themselves. But there's a difference in terms of expressing yourself and letting stuff get to your head, where it's like Daimani almost feels like Rassi owes him something because the world has been like, why did Rassi say that? Because Daimani is that good. Like Daimani, it almost looks like Daimani feels, well, I'm just going to do what I want to because rugby or Rassi owes this to me instead of like being the character that he is, but still putting in the hard yards, putting in the hard work. Um, so I get what you mean, Brevan. And I, I just think like there's a difference between being a character and then just like, showboating yeah. or stupid stupid just stuff like Brett, just thinking just like, the game owes you something yeah brett brett brought it up when we played the stormers in cape town and this was in december after the game i mean Atiba Daimani did an interview and it was very well about, i wanted to say sorry and it was more about what his clothing line was about in the game and you know i just think there's a time and a place and i think if obviously I he probably knows his teammates appreciate him. I know he plays for his team, but I just think there's a time and a place where you can talk about that 
and that wasn't the time. Um, and that's just, that's, so I just, maybe there's things in his mind that maybe he's not mature enough to be a Springbok yet. And that's just where I'm coming from, really. And in that same interview, we spoke about people were talking about Leo van Ruas, and now I put, I, I'm man of the match. People will put respect on my name. I think Rasi saw that and thought, you little piece of shit. Did you actually just say that? And I brought that up to you guys. Um, it was funny at the time. But the more you think about it, the more you, you realize that this oak is all about himself. Like, why, why, would, you, why would you put a, a guy like that that clearly has no intention to play for his team than, other than himself and his paycheck why would that guy be rewarded with the highest honor of playing for the Springboks? So, uh, I maybe worded that wrong and a little bit harsh, but that's just Yeah, you how... worded it wrong. You missed out. He mentioned Cameron Anacom as well. Further than, other than that, it was correct, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, yeah, look, um, I think Daimani is at a stage where, you know, a bit of maturity in the game will help him a lot. I think uh, it, I would love for Kitsov to still have been there because Kitsov is such a humble guy, you know. He's so and to get Oaks to get Damani under the, the under the wing of like uh, uh, a Franz Mahaber, uh, a Kitsov, those are guys that will really bring you to your senses, bring you back to your begin. Goodness gracious, if Sia Kulisi was there, I'm sure Kulisi would be like, listen, bro, we. You know, if you want to play for the box, you know, you got to play for each other, you know. And I'm sure he wants to. So I'm not going to say the guy is too arrogant and whatever. I, I think he's still young and he, and he has a lot of growing up to do. The same way Cameron Hanukum has to mature. The same way even Rus has so much more maturing to do. And this is the beauty of Springbok rugby is, is we have so much young talent that is still maturing and 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 i'm excited to see the future for all of these guys because i think they're all good enough to to represent the country in the near future but if you look at a bob skinstead back in the day he was 20 years old when he made his bok debut he was 21 when he got elected springbok captain when you're talking about maturity at that level you can't wait until you're 28 years old to to say, okay, I think I need to mature up now. I think I need to start playing for my team now because I'd like to wear that green and gold. I think that should have happened years ago. And Achiba Daimani has, has got this criticism before, and yet it's still all about him. It's still all about his clothing line, and he wants respect put on his name and stuff like that. And I love the guy. I'm a big fan. I want him to start every single game because he adds value to the team. But in a Springbok setup, imagine they win the World Cup with Achiba Daimani there. He'll take that trophy, post a photo and say, I did it, mom. Or I did this all on my own. Stuff like that. That's just what plays in the back of my mind. Anyway, I hope you guys don't have any further comments because I think let's wrap this up. We've spoken about who we want as captain in the comment section. Let us know who you think should be the Springbok captain and why it should be Nietling for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brevin, casual bias, have a great evening. Cheers, Bye. Great. We will see you again.